Hello friends, my name is Rail Emil and welcome to a brand new Let's Play here on my channel. This is the original Need for Speed Underground. So, I covered the... I covered Underground 2 about a year ago now and ever since I covered Underground 2 people have been asking uh, when are you going to do the original Underground? Well, the time is here, the time is now. Um, so, just before we get into the meat and potatoes of this, which is called the career mode, or go underground as it's called in this game, I'll just quickly run you through the main menu. There is the go underground mode, which is called the career mode. Uh, quick race, which is just sort of single player races, you pick the track, you pick the cars, so on and so forth. Uh, split screen, which is of course a uh, split screen competition. Uh, career statistics, which uh, there's nothing in there at the moment. Uh, there's customized ride where it's actually pretty cool. Uh, you can customize all of the stock cars in the game. Uh, once you sort of unlock them in the career mode, you can get the opportunity to customize them, and you don't have to spend money. You can do whatever you want to them, and so on and so forth. So that's pretty cool. Um, there's also the options, which you know, obviously, that's just audio, camera, car controller, which I will just turn the vibration off because I had it on on a test run, and it wasn't particularly great. Uh, EA track, save loads, credits, and trailers course. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and save the changes to our profile here. Uh, I have turned auto save off in this game because kind of like in Underground 2, uh, the auto save it takes a hell of a long time to do. So I've just decided to turn it off uh, for simplicity's sake. Uh, and there's also drive profile, which is just you know create, save, load, delete, uh, and play online, which doesn't work anymore. Anyways, let's get into this. Let's go underground. Welcome to underground mode. Your racing career starts here. Take on the toughest drivers on the street and prove you are the ultimate racer. Winners earn cool unlocks and upgrades. Losers, go home. Let's do this. Alrighty, so, um, control-wise, it's very much the uh, same as you'd expect from Edition 2 Racer. Um, Xbox, X button accelerates, square button brakes, uh, circle, I believe, is nitrous in this game. Triangle could be handbrake, I'm not too sure. Uh, but you get the idea, it's basically the same as it is in every other PS2 racing game. Um, for this Let's Play, I'm using manual, and I've also turned the stability control off because, well, I don't need any of those, and because this isn't like Most Wanted or Carbon when there's a lot going on on the screen on, uh, at a time, uh, manual transmission is fine by me. The reason I didn't use it in Carbon on Most Wanted is just because there was simply too much going on uh, on the screen usually. Uh, everything moves at a much faster pace in Carbon and Most Wanted, while as in Underground it's a little bit more... I wouldn't say realistic, but uh, the cars aren't quite as quick, you do get a bit more thinking time, so I am using manual for this LP, although should I need to switch over to automatic for whatever reason, I will do so. Um, also, I'm having a terrible driver, uh, uh, yeah, I'm having a terrible drive right now, apparently, uh, which is a little bit strange. Anyways, um, so you basically get the idea, this is sort of a tutorial race, if you will. Uh, just driving around in my Integra Type R here. Uh, I would assume this is a fully modified Integra Type R. It feels very, very quick. It's got a turbo meter on it, so one would assume uh, this is a fully upgraded one. And, well, make a note of this circuit, because in the early stages of the game, this circuit uh, will appear with relative frequency. It's actually a pretty decent circuit, though, so I'm not exactly complaining. Uh, it's a pretty fun one. A lot of fast sweeping turns and so on. Uh, as we go on in the game, the circuit races obviously get a bit more complicated. We do get to see different areas of the city. Uh, I believe it's mostly just split into sort of two main areas. Oh, sorry, three main areas. There's the docks, there's the prison, and then there's just sort of the main city streets. Oh, and Chinatown as well. So four sort of main districts, and each of them have their own different sort of road and so on. Uh, the game doesn't really make reference to it, it'll just sort of throw you wherever, but uh, you'll be able to sort of understand what I mean by different districts uh, when we get round to it. Anyways, uh, we are almost coming to the end of this race. We are destroying the competition, as you'd probably expect, because of course this is a, to uh, a tutorial race. And there we go, race is over. So we now wait for a loading screen. <laughs> is that your fantasy? Look. 
take a good look, man. He's a winner, and winners get mad respect. It ain't just about the cards, but the attitude. So which one of these is your car? Alrighty, so as you can tell, cutscenes are very much different from Underground 2, i.e. they're actually not terrible. They're still not particularly great. Anyways, uh, we are now charged with picking our first car. We have a choice of the Mark IV Volkswagen Golf, which I'm not going to go for uh, because I used that in Underground 2. We have the SI Civic Coupe, which unfortunately was missing from the European version of Underground 2, uh, so I never got a chance to drive it. We have the Peugeot 206, which again, another car from Underground 2. Uh, Mazda MX-5, this is the NB edition, my personal favourite of the MX-5s. And finally, a bit of an interesting choice really, uh, there's the Dodge Neon as well in this game. Uh, which actually isn't a bad car. Uh, I think for our first car, I'm probably going to be more inclined to go with the Civic, just because I really like this car and I never got a chance to use it in uh, Underground 2. So yeah, I think we're going to go for the SI Coupe as our first car. You want to be the best? You gotta take these boys down. If you lose, you're gone. Got it? Good. Now move it. Come here to find the latest races. The race map will show you where all the action is. Okay, so I'm trying not to speak over the main cutscenes. I may end up speaking over the characters sort of in these little intro segments. Uh, to the races because I can't actually hear what they're saying. Anyways, uh, in this first episode we're going to be tackling a circuit race, a sprint race, a drift race, a drag race and a lap knockout in sort of our first list of events. So let's go ahead and just go through these in order I guess. We'll start with a circuit race. Okay, uh, I'm going to go for hard for the starters. Uh, this game is known for having quite a large difficulty spike. So, I'll sort of decrease the difficulty as we go on like I did in Underground 2. But for these first couple of races, I shall have no issues racing on hard. It allows us to maximise the amount of cash we can get as well. Uh, so, that's probably what I'm going to be doing. Anyways, in this first race, we have what? A Golf, a Neon... And something over there, what's it going to be? We'll find out, I guess. Oh, it's a Peugeot. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Unfortunately, 106 is not in this game. Um, although, I wouldn't have gone with it anyways. It still would have been kind of cool to see it, but never mind. We do get the Dodge Neon, though, which uh, never appeared in Underground 2. It was supposed to. Uh, in fact, there was a hell of a lot of cars which were supposed to appear in Underground 2. Quite a few from uh, Underground as well, but they never ended up making it. Such as the... Uh, and it's not in this game, but it was supposed to be in Underground 2. There is an Acura NSX, um, sort of mentioned in the files, which is pretty interesting. But we're not here to speak about Underground 2 too much. We're here to speak about Underground 1. Um, so, Underground 1, uh, when this game first came out, it was pretty darn popular. Um, this is sort of the start of what I like to call Need for Speed heyday. So, you know, you had Underground, Underground 2, Most Wanted, and Carbon, and then sort of... It started dropping off a bit with games like Pro Street, which uh, not a lot of people liked. I didn't like it when it first came out, just because I wanted a lot more of the street racing action. But in retrospect, I can actually see Pro Street was a pretty good game. And then there's sort of Undercover, which really wasn't very good at all. And the game series sort of dropped off from there. Uh, they've tried revitalizing it a few times. Criterion basically turned it into Burnout. Uh, and then Ghost Games have released NFS 2015, and that's sort of where we are on this cycle, at least. Uh, they're on about making, well, I believe they're making a new Need for Speed game now, so... Yeah, hopefully it does a bit better than NFS 2015. I didn't mind 2015 too much, it just wasn't a particularly amazing game. Uh, not as good as Underground, but when this game first came out, my god, it blew up. This was just, this was such a big game. Uh, you know, people loved it, they absolutely loved the customization. Back when this game came out, there was virtually no game that rivaled this for customization. 
It was so good. Like, it, it was such an incredible game. It's still an incredible game to this day. Uh, again, in retrospect, Underground 2 is the superior game. I will not deny that. I still have a lot more nostalgia yeah, for Underground 1. Uh, but Underground 2 is amazing. Again, it's open world and everything, which is pretty awesome. That Neon isn't going to have a chance to overtake us, despite my little blunder. Uh, so there we go, anyways. We're across the line in our first circuit race. Jose, despite calling us out, really did not do particularly well. So we have 625 in the bank, which is cool. And let's continue on making that m money. Making moves, making moves, making million dollar moves. Right. Next up, Sprint Race, uh, which I don't believe has a sort of intro voice. Anyways, race through the downtown course. First one past the airport construction zone takes home the bank. Yes, uh, money's called bank in this game, uh, which is a bit strange. Anyways, there's a focus with some uh, vignettes on them. Uh, of course, we will get into the customization. Customization is a huge part of this game, uh, and I do obviously plan to explore that. Uh, probably not going to do it for the first two or three episodes. Uh, probably start customising the car once we've actually got a bit of money uh, and so on. So that's sort of my plan for now. Oh, I should mention, I am playing this on the PlayStation 2. Uh, there's a PC version of this game, which is the most superior, I believe. There's also an Xbox version. Uh, I've just chosen the PS2 version because it's the most readily available to me, essentially. Uh, so that's why I've decided uh, to go ahead and play the PS2 version. Also, I can now record PS2 games through AV2 HDMI. Maybe I should, comp uh, you know, people have said, why don't you record in component? Uh, the component cables that I picked up seem to have an issue with them. And ultimately, I just don't really like the way component looks. It doesn't stretch itself quite out onto the screen as much. It also looks a little bit pixely to me, so... Um, you know, it's, it is what it is. Uh, if I could find a better solution, uh, to my issues, then I totally would. Maybe I should look at getting some more component cables, not some crappy ones this time, though, like some proper decent ones, but, uh, uh, that's not going to be during this LP, and probably not even during my next LP, which is another PlayStation 2 game that I've got in mind, so. Yeah. Also, I should actually mention this quickly, uh, this is a solo Let's Play. Uh, I have not got a stream with me this time. Uh, the last few Let's Plays that I've done, uh, Forza 2, Gran Turismo 1, uh, all of those were with people. Uh, you know, I was streaming those. I'm not streaming Underground 1. Uh, I may do later on, depending, but for now, I kind of want to keep it solo, just so I can speak to you guys, tell you what, uh, a bit more about the game, how it works, and so on. Um, and also not be as distracted as usual, because this game does require quite a fair amount of concentration. Anyways, uh, once again we win. Once again, a Neon was keeping us um, at its sort of... I don't know. It was trying to scare us. Anyways, uh, you may notice this. I'll just quickly go through this. This is the style point screen. Essentially, uh, you can see that gauge build up. As that gauge builds up, we'll unlock vineyards and so on. It's a pretty interesting way of doing that sort of stuff. And eventually bonus cars as well. Anyways, 625 have been added or has been added to the bank. So we will continue on our tirade through uh, these races. All right, next up, we've got a drift race. Okay, anyways, uh, while the crowd with speed and style, put up big points to get mad props and big bank. Um, so you may be saying, but bro, you've got a front-wheel drive Civic, how can you drift? Well, kind of like in Underground 2, um, it is, very, oh, in fact, most Need for Speed games, it is very possible to drift front-wheel drive. Yes, technically, it's not accurate, bloody 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 blah, 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 but it's a Need for Speed game, it's an arcade game, it's allowed to do this. Uh, unlike in Underground 2, though, uh, which was sort of more dependent on, I like to call it body roll drifting. That's how you sort of drift front wheel drive in uh, Underground 2. In this game, yeah, you drift them like you drift a rear wheel drive car. It is a bit easier in a rear wheel drive car to sort of get sliding. Uh, it's harder to control, it, essentially. So if you want control, go front wheel drive. If you want sort of easier... Uh, initiations then you should go for a rear-wheel drive car 
And we will be exploring all sorts of drivetrains during this LP. I'm not going to stick with my Civic the entire time. So, also I don't think the Civic would be particularly competitive later on. Although, I'm not sure if this game works similar to Most Wanted, where basically you can go through with whatever car you want. Or whether it's more similar to Carbon, where it has, like, sort of cut-off points to the limits of the cars. Anyways, as you can see, it beat that drift race pretty easily. Now, the cool thing with drift races is you get a hell of a lot of style points. And as you can see, our gauge has filled up. So we get tier level 1 vinyls, which is nice. 625 in the bank, and we unlock a, a drift do track, which is awesome. So, if we get to the end of this LP, and I desperately need to get some style points, uh, drifting is by far and away the best way to do it. Also, I should mention, quick race, you can actually earn style points in as well. So, you can technically... Uh, unlock quite a few of the sort of visual like decals and vignoles uh, Just by playing the quick race mode, which is pretty cool. Anyways, drag racing aka my favorite thing to do in this game All right so yeah, uh, sort of when I was growing up and playing this game, this was my favourite thing to do. I loved the drag racing so much. It's so fun. Um, basically, it works similar to drag racing in pretty much every uh, every other Need for Speed game drag racing has been in. Uh, you have manual transmission, you try and essentially rev match the gears and get perfect shifts and so on and so forth. You'll see how it works. Anyways, we've got an MX-5, a Golf and a Neon. Anyways, that was a bit of a crappy launch. I will say it's quite hard to get the launch correct when you're using uh, buttons. It was a lot easier in Pro Street when you had uh, triggers, because of course I mainly play Pro Street on the 360, so I'm used to having triggers to do that. So, Anyways, as you can see, drag racing, pretty straightforward. I don't know if there's any traffic on this first level. Uh, traffic does appear later on. As you can see, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, pretty easy to do. Anyways, let's see what sort of time we can set on the drag tracks. Because this is sort of what I like to do. I like to sort of see the times I set on the drag tracks. Uh, because as you upgrade the car, you can see how much better of a time you set. Anyways, 41.2. So that's a decent amount. Uh, of course, it beats everyone else in this race. Not by much, but it does beat them. You don't get too many style points from drag races. 625. And we actually unlock our first car of this LP. We unlock the 2003 Mitsubishi Lancer ES. And we also unlock a drag track. So, it's actually pretty interesting uh, in this game. There's no Lancer Evos, there is no uh, Impreza WRXs. It's just uh, the standard Lancer and a standard Impreza, which is pretty cool. Anyways, the pressure is on. The last man standing wins this lap knockout around Olympic Square. Uh, so, yeah, lap knockout, basically what it is, is the car that's in last place at the end of each lap gets eliminated until there's only two cars left, and then you've sort of got to be the last man standing. It's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, of course, that little intro uh, wall of text there uh, basically explained its way through it. Alright, take two, uh, because I despise lap knockout. <laughs> Uh, you sort of have a crash and then I ended up behind the 206 and it didn't look like I was going to catch up and then I had a bit of another accident, so yeah. Anyways, um, again, lap knockout. I don't really like lap knockout. Uh, it's just, basically what lap knockout is to me is it's basically just a circuit race but a little bit more gimmicky. Uh, so I'm not personally a huge fan of uh, the way lap knockout works. Uh, I believe... Did Underground 2 get rid of Lap Knockout? I don't think it did. I think it was still there, but it wasn't really as prevalent. Uh, which is a good thing, because I just don't like the idea of Lap Knockout. Um, yeah, it makes circuit racing a little bit more tense, but for me personally, if I'm in the lead, it just drags it out a bit longer, and if I'm behind, it just sort of frustrates me a bit, so... Yeah, it's ultimately not my preferred style of racing, but... It is what it is. Yes, anyways, uh, as I was sort of discussing uh, before, I'm not actually sure what I said in the lap knockout. I'm trying to basically run through the game in this first episode. I was trying to do it completely flawlessly, but hey, you know, that doesn't happen. Uh, so I should quickly explain sort of the start of cars, maybe. So, as far as what statistically is the best start of the car to go for, I actually think the Civic is not one of the better ones to do. 
Now, I went for the Civic just because I really, really like the Civic and I really wanted to use it. So, that's the reason I went for the Honda Civic. Uh, if you're starting this game out, though, I probably wouldn't recommend the Civic. Uh, it's the most costly of the bunch. It also isn't the best. I believe it may gain an advantage later on. Uh, but for the start of the game, I think it's one of the uh, lesser accelerating vehicles. Uh, I think top speed wise, it might have a little bit of an edge over some of the other cars. Uh, basically, I've, I've had a crash, excellent. Also, I will just say, uh, in this game, it has similar crash physics to Underground 2. In the event that I'm in a crash, what you'll likely see me do quite a lot is just reset the car instantly. Um, yes, that means that the crashes aren't quite as spectacular. Uh, you know, sort of, it isn't quite as good to watch, but it just makes things a hell of a lot easier because the cutscenes are dragged out and take forever. Uh, whereas if you just hit instant restart, sure, your car is uh, sort of taken back to zero miles per hour, but you can get on the road much quicker, and ultimately it just works better for me. Anyways, I will just quickly point out that like in Underground 2, the AI is pretty easy to uh, spin out. Um, just thought I'd explain that there quickly, and also that gets the golf out of my way. But yeah, the AI are relatively easy to spin around. The traffic are heavy, the um, AI cars are light. Uh, in Most Wanted, uh, it is the different way around, of course. Uh, the traffic cars are the light ones that you can push around easier, because, of course, you know, they needed to do that for the pursuit physics and so on. Uh, well as uh, race cars are incredibly heavy, so... Basically, the traffic cars in this game have a lot of mass, the race cars don't have much at all. So, if you do need to uh, do a little bit of a cheeky overtake, uh, you can just spin your opponent out. Uh, it's a perfectly viable tactic, so, yeah. Anyways, I was going to go for that shortcut, but the SUV is going to block me. Whoop, there we go. I've got to slam into that wall, apparently. Uh, that's sort of what playing without stability control probably does. I haven't played this game with stability control, so I don't really know what it does all that much. I assume it assists with the handling slightly, but I can't imagine it makes that much of a difference. Anyways, we are across the line, of course. We were the last man standing. Uh, so, yeah, we get 625 in the bank. We unlock a circuit track, and that is it. So, yeah, um... Oh, knockout, not my favourite of races. Again, the races do get slightly more interesting as you pile on more performance parts, but there you go. Anyways, there is a racing tournament, but we'll tackle that next time. Uh, so yeah, thank you all very much for watching this first episode of the Need for Speed Underground LP. I do hope you enjoyed. I hope you join me for the next episode. Uh, thank you all very much for watching. My name's been The Rail Emil, and until next time, farewell.